Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, I'm joined uh, by a <laughs> splendid guest. Um, Mr. Peter Dance has jumped in for a game to give Damien a break. He's been beaten up by Tournament of Power Goku. He's defeated Damien. We might not see him for a couple of rounds while he's recovering. Um, but I am so excited to bring Pete here and also Vegeta, starter deck Vegeta from set one, undefeated so far in the tournament, up against, well, you know, you you, you guessed it, everyone, it's Topku, of course it is. We couldn't have a game go by without Topku. Pete, how are you doing, my friend? <laughs> I'm doing good, thank you very much, and and hello, uh, chat. I'm back for anyone obviously watching um, all all day so far. Obviously, me and Damien casted Masters together, and then uh, I thought, you know what, I wanna I wanna hang out with you guys. Um, I wanna hang out with Joe and and give give uh, Damien a, a much needed break as well. So <laughs> I thought, you know, why not? I was, I was a bit disappointed. I wasn't here for the freezer matchup because I'm a big fan of freezer. Um, however, Vegeta is also one of my favorite characters as well. Um, and also Beera. So I guess I couldn't have gone wrong um, with either one of those. So um, I guess we'll tell him to start. You've already told him to start. Yeah. That's fine. Uh to be honest with you, mate, I think we saved you a bit of heartbreak from coming to watch the Freezer game um, <laughs> because I just uh, I think you would have just been upset watching it. Um, we we really held out our hopes for Freezer and uh, it kind of got clapped. <laughs> yeah, I caught I I did catch some of it because I was eating and and what have you, um, and yeah, it didn't it didn't look too too good. Um, so I need to catch up a little bit, guys. So you'll have to forgive me a little bit because obviously uh, I'm still getting used to set two cards because. I'm sure, as I said, we don't have this in the UK at the moment. Um, so, you know, we're, we're, we're a little bit behind, or at least I am. <laughs> well, I mean, if anyone has been here in the chat for the last five rounds, you won't need any catching up on what Top Coup can do. We have seen it do its thing <laughs> for a good number of rounds. And we've got an utterly stacked game here as well. Um, let's go over the players. We've had the Varlon already. He won that first round in a really mm. tight set against um, Sublet. Um, yeah. And then on the right, we've got Muxit Khan as well, um, who is a very well-renowned Masters player. Normally plays a lot of yellow decks. Um, had a really big rise with the Trunks Jeter archetype in Masters. Um, and here he is doing really well, 4-0, um, with the Vegeta Star deck, um, deck, which has uh, kind of seen a couple of results along some of the Fusion World tournaments. And we may actually have an answer that we've been looking for all tournament to the dominance of top coup. Yeah, definitely. I, to be honest, I just want to see Devol play the uh, two cost uh, extra card uh, just because that picture reminds me of uh, a favorite deck from Masters. So uh, it's the Invoker back leader. <laughs> Wait, you're part of Invoker, Pete. You should have really yeah, mentioned yeah, that. Yeah, I say. Yeah, did I say? <laughs> <laughs> Right, so Vegito gets played here. Um, the three drop Vegito, we mentioned it earlier when we were covering the Zamasu game. If you have seven or fewer cards in hand, reduce the cost of battle cards in your opponent's battle area by one, and then you get to choose a battle card with a cost of one or less and bottom deck it. Um, really nice piece to establish here, and kind of as we've seen as a trend in these matchups, we're not attacking with the Vegito, we are just chilling because the more times we attack the top coup leader, the closer he gets to awaken. Now, don't get me wrong, they find their way there anyway, but the longer we can hold them back for, the better chance these decks tend to have. Yeah, the Vegito is quite an interesting mechanic because even in Masters, we don't have anything like this where it's reducing the, the cost. Obviously, and for anyone familiar with One Piece, the black color tends to do that really well. Um, but it's quite an interesting mechanic that it, it reduces the cost only by one. Um, but I think it's going to be a trend we probably see with blue um, going down the line i think we'll start seeing you know, minus by three minus by two which then allows the removal that normally can't hit the big boys actually start you know hitting those targets so i do think that will be a trend um going forward um which will be quite interesting i think yeah absolutely um we see the um command may come out it doesn't get its cost reduced because there is battle cards in play the really important uh, bit of tech that Deval's got in the deck there to remove that Vegito. 
um, so that that permanent effect doesn't linger on his side of the board and make it easy to remove things. But you love to see it. Uh, Vegeta just puts it back on the board and goes, how about you show me another Kamehameha? It's there to stay. Not attacking with the leader as well. We love to see this. Yeah, it's it's again, it's a tactic that we use so often where you're keeping the leader from awakening, which is quite important. Obviously, in set one, we had to watch out when we want to awaken Broly, um, because obviously with the um, not just going to 25, but also the ramping as well, you know, keep him at four life and just pass your turn. And then he has to awaken and he doesn't get one untapped energy. And I think the same is with this Goku, isn't it? It's like, because it awakens at three life, you want to have such a board that you're able to put so much pressure on. Um, and, you know, why not, right? <laughs> well, that's actually something we saw Deval do in his mirror match in round one against Sublet, okay. was that he just built this board up and then got to the right turn and went, OK, I'm awakening now. And the best thing about Topku is it plays so many self-awakeners that yeah. It just it gets to choose when it wants to awaken 90% of the time. So it just goes, yep, this is the turn, foot on the gas. Kefla, Gohan, another battle card, awaken, uh like and, and just go just go in from there. Um it, it it's absurd, really. Um <laughs> so yeah, absolutely controlling the awaken is so so important in these matchups. Yeah, de definitely. And it was it was so interesting as well when I was surprised when I first read this um, T.O.P. leader, because obviously, even though it's not alternative awakening in the traditional sense, they've already moved away from for life only in set two as well, which makes me wonder, you know, how much further will they push it? Um, so it was quite interesting when I first saw um, this sort of mechanic get introduced already. But of course, the leader's got a pretty good ability when it's awakened. So <laughs> just, just an all right ability, isn't it? It's not too bad. It, it does the job, doesn't it? <laughs> this this Android 17 that he's just charged is a is a fantastic card as well. Um, the fact you get the 5k boost, it's it's crazy strong. Um, I, I love it as a pressure piece. Really good for like tackling those twenty. Like it's why Broly's kind of dropped off so drastically because yeah. so many cars like this exist to boost to twenty five and pressure the twenty five k anyway. So you yeah. no longer get the benefit of awakening down to three and like three life and being a twenty five k leader because Topku just doesn't care. <laughs> yeah. And it, and again we see this Kefla, which is obviously constantly getting played. You know, it's not, well, 20 base, but technically it's going to be 25 when you're awakened. You know, you draw a card, so it replaces itself. So just that alone is great. <laughs> but then when you get the fact you can then play a three or less T.O.P. in its trait from your hand, like, this card is insane. <laughs> like, we've, we've been chatting uh, between rounds with chat, and we've tried to come up with some nice solutions to the card, um, but I would say the overwhelming majority in chat are saying it's probably time to ban Kefla. We have to see how the format shapes up, but we're definitely seeing um, Kefla asserted dominance over this tournament at the minute. Well, yeah, if we compare to set one, because obviously I was playing Freezer in set one, because obviously I love Freezer. You know, the closest that we had to this kind of thing, there was two cards. Obviously, you had the three drop Ginyu. There was a bit more of a requirement, but that just untapped two. So that's kind of like free playing, but there yeah. was a bit of a criteria. And then the other was the five drop Freezer that allowed you to play a four drop King Cold. Now, those two, you know, are both great cards, but none of those drew um, the, the, the cards where this one draws a card as well. Um, and it's a 10k, like it's never a dead card, it's a great card. <laughs> and then to add to your laundry list, there, none of those cards require one energy to play them with a leader effect either. <laughs> so, exactly. understandably, <laughs> we get to this point with it. Well, that's the thing, right? It just, it, like you say, it just starts all adding up to why you know it's a much better setup and here we go we see the removal again he actually uses energy marker which i think is fine but he's obviously got rid of the vegito three drop i mean if we look at vegito he hasn't really played much has he but because again he's pay he's having to pay full cost <laughs> to play any of his stuff you know we're looking at three four energy a time um where obviously 
Goku yeah. is, is just cheating things out left and right. I think that's it. So he's, he's having to play a fair game. He's having to play fairly. He's having to tap the required <laughs> energy for his battle cards. Um, but I'm really, uh, I'm really enjoying how well Vegeta is navigating this game. Like he's now up to six energy, four life, healthy amount of cards in hand, and Topku is having to play a lot slower and can't awaken at the minute, putting a lot of battle cards in rest mode. Where if Blue can start to navigate this and clear the board, you know, like a sinister sickle extra card here, um, wiping the board as well as attacks from the Vegeta leader, which is 35k now, and this Gotenks. You can wipe the board, and then because the um, top Goku leader isn't awakened, he's going to really struggle to re-establish that board and his hand at the same time. So yeah. getting to this point in the game with a healthy hand size, with a healthy life size, awakened being able to pressure with the Vegeta leader, it's exactly where he wants to be. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, and funny enough, I was actually going to bring this up as well. I was going to say, are blue decks still doing the the whole peel off shoe uh kind of looping with the the extra card or, or not anymore yeah so this uh this deck plays three copies of gallic gun one copy of final hope slash and the four peel offs yeah. um so yeah absolutely they're still exploiting this like kind of value engine um which is really like especially when a lot of the requirements are seven or less cards in hand um yeah. but then being able to kind of use your hand aggressively to batter down this board while top coup isn't awakened and then just constantly using the pilaf and the gallic gun to recycle your hand and almost infinitely combo out of swingers while still getting to get rid of your opponent's battle cards i think is kind of where vegeta is finding its niche in the meta at the minute i think this is why uh Muxi is doing so so well with this deck at the minute yeah and i was just actually reading this um this two cost extra card that's in Deval's hand. This is also an incredibly crazy good card as well under the right Insane. situations. Because the fact is you can then pick up your Keflers that are in your drop for two energy. That's crazy. And it represents so much combo power as well. Like we've seen yeah. so many like kill shots today with like Ribrian swings with double strike. Um uh, arrogance for two add back Kefler, put another 10k on top, and you're like, for one card, that's 35k yeah. worth of combo power. On top of a double strike, you paid one with your leader effect to get to. Um, time for the awaken turn, I think. I think we've just seen Topku go down to three life with the player that Roshi now as well. Um, let's see if Vegeta can weather the storm, because it's done well so far, but we've seen so many decks get to this point, and then as soon as that awaken turn kicks in, um, Top Coup just yeah. kind of kind of goes for him, and uh, all of a sudden, I'm sat here eating my words, going, "Wow, this deck was doing so well." And uh, I look away, look back again, and they're packing up their cards because they've just been battered. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And like you say, you know, discard one, which normally is a heavy cost, uh, I would say in in Fusion World, but not when you're establishing such a huge board. Um, oh, and here we go. So we see the <laughs> we see the two cast. Um, the Roshi means he gets to play it for one as well because he played the Roshi to awaken this yeah. turn as well. Yeah, exactly. He doesn't get. Oh yeah, he does that back. Yeah, that's the thing because like even this Basil swinging for five k goes up to thirty, and then that fulfills the requirement to add a card back <laughs> anyway. So there's no battle card you could swing with which wouldn't like unless it's zero power. Yeah. Because it gives it 25k. See, that's quite clever, isn't it? Because I was like reading and I was thinking of more of a leader swing when I was reading, but yeah, actually, I didn't think of it like that. You just, it, it's the same as like, you know, half hour play or whatever, but on, on Masters. And it's like, yeah, you just buff up the battle card <laughs> and then you basically pick up uh, Kefla from your drop. That's that's insane value. That That is crazy strong. Yeah, and this is why we're just seeing Topku dominating back-to-back -back tournaments at the minute, and you see Deval's really putting on the pressure. And look at the hand size here as well. You think that he's been sort of starved of being able to play this board for so long. There is still a small novel being yep. clipped through in that hand by Deval with, what's that, six battle cards on the board? Uh, <laughs> so Vegeta's one and, like, six cards in hand? I was saying how well it was doing. 
Well, funny enough, at the start of this turn, uh, I was thinking, okay, Vegeta's done well. He's actually, like, cleared the board. But, but then I was, like, soon lived. It's literally, as soon as he awakened, it was like, okay, now we got loads of things back on the field. Um, so let's see what... Um, what Vegeta can try and do here. Cause unfortunately blue doesn't have any like massive board wipe or anything like that, you know, which is obviously some of the advantage green has, um, or at least off the top of my head, I'm not aware of any board wiper that blue has. There is Zeno, but you have to pay six energy for a 20 K and it wipes your board. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Zeno. And he doesn't play it in the deck though. Looking at the deck list at the minute, Vegeta doesn't play the Zeno. It plays Sinister Sickle, which will be three energy to bottom deck, two, four costs or less. But honestly, okay. I think there's a shot to go for game here. Um, tapped out only what, so there, there is a, there's about eight cards in hand, but you know there's a couple of extra cards and Duval is tapped out. I do wonder whether he goes for the line here of 35k leader and the double strike on the Vegeta as well. Uh, looks like he's playing it safe though. Circle gets rid of two. He's used three energy. Um, but I wonder whether he has a chance to remove most of this board here or whether he had a chance to potentially sort of sneak out a bit of a win there. But it's so risky in these matchups because if you don't win on that turn... That board of six, seven battle cards is surely ending the game on the next turn. Yeah, because that's the thing, right? You can go for the board clear, um, but then it's like you, you then have to deal with the board again next turn. Um, one of the bright sides, and perhaps why blue could potentially do well into, uh, say, this particular version of red, is because the bottom decking of cards uh, because again, if it's KO, they're in the drop and then he's, he's got ways to pick them back up and do all this stuff. When they're in the bottom, um, it sort of stops him resurrecting from the drop as well. So I think there's some really cool things that Blue can potentially do. Um, so he's swinging double strike here. Um, <laughs> and he just took it because that was a 55k double. So now... Koku's on one life. So do we think we're going to see basically an all-in on leader swing next turn? I, th I think we will. I think we will. Yeah, I I'm not sure if is going to get another turn. So <laughs> the, the, the double strike was an interesting one because, yes, it pressures and puts him to one, but he's got to be so confident his hand can survive this turn because he's basically given Topku two cards there, extra cards to play with. And look at the size of the hand now and all yeah. that extra combo power that then goes on top of this swarm of battle cards surely coming his way. This is why <laughs> my thinking was you have to end the game last turn. Uh, your double strike and your leader swing might be enough to push for or at least burn a lot of these cards so the clapback isn't so devastating. Um, but hey, these, these are two better players than I am at the game for sure. Uh, I'm sure there is a method here. Uh, and hopefully some Gallic Gun shenanigans might uh, uh, get Vegeta through this turn here. Yeah, I mean, this one's going to be very difficult because the biggest thing is what you said, which is the hand size difference. The The hand size that um, Vegeta has is literally nothing compared to Goku's. Uh, so we see a super combo here. We know he's got uh, at least another super combo in hand from what we can see as well. Um, yeah. And then he's got some other combo cards, but uh, I just it's arrogance. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what a great name for the card as well. Ooh, picks up a Roshi. Interesting. Yeah, if he's he... got another one. I mean, I think it's a ten k combo anyway. But I think if he's got like another hidden arrogance there as well, which he doesn't seem to have lethal in through his hand, but that might have been why he's trying to pick it up. Goes down to that all-important two. There is definitely a uh, Kefler into another card here. There might be a Ribrian waiting in the hand as well for that one energy. Might be what Duval's searching for here. Gets it, yet yeah, with the leader effect, and it's just an immediate concession there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> as soon as the double strike comes down, he knows that whole pamphlet of cards is just getting dropped on the board, uh, and he's going to lose to the double strike. Um Chat, we're so sorry. These decks will beat Top Coup eventually, but uh, yeah, he is leaving a bloody pile.
So we're just going to be switching over to the caster stream now to uh, uh, go from that game there. So you'll get to 